Uh, rank and knowledge, that's two numbers. You can associate with the linear map. So here's my setting again. I have, I have two quadruples, V and W, which are vector spaces. I have a map between these two vector spaces, which is linear. Rank, in that case, rank in that case is simply the dimension of the image space. So we know what the image space of a linear map is. If you measure the dimension of that space, that is something, the number you will come up with. Uh, just if you just, I know it's a really, it's the first, one of the first few really nice warm days after the, after the winter. I know you, you're all longing to go there. Just give me another 10 minutes and you will be there, trust me. Uh, so the rank will be the dimension of this image space. That's the just the definition. You see, I use my symbol, which basically says equal by definition. Nullity, it's a dimension of the null space. So here I have just example, which tells you compute the rank and nullity of a, of a, of a linear map. So here's my linear map. It's a question 25 part C in the tutorial book. We're given the metrics with components 1, 2, negative 1, 1, 3, 2, 0, negative 2, 0, 1, negative 1, and 1. We have such a matrix. We have a linear map between R4 and R3, which is a matrix type linear map. So it's simply matrix multiplication. Here it is. Yeah, I would like. I'd like to compute both the image space of this linear map and null null subspace of this linear map, and by implication also dimensions of each of them. So rank and nullity. So, uh, what do I do? I do this. Again, I fed this matrix to computer algebra system, and I took it to the row echelon form. As a result of this, uh, here's my row echelon form: three, two, zero, negative two, zero, four, negative three, five. 0, 0, negative 1, 1. You see, due to some reason, due to some reason, this computer algebra system singled out the second row as a preferable one and put it in the first position and then use that to vanish the rest of it. Probably if you do it by hand, you wouldn't follow that, 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 that pathway because the first row is as good as the, actually even better than the second one. I don't know why that system decided to take the, the third row, a second row as a preferable one, but it's relevant for, the, for, the, for, the, for what I'm going to say next. If you accept this, if you accept this as a row echelon form of this matrix, then remember the image space we have just established in case of the matrix type linear map, image space simply the column space of a matrix. And from here we can see that the first three columns are leading columns. So if I call these first three columns A1, A2, and A3, then my immediate conclusion will be that the image space of my T is the same as the column space of my matrix A, something we just discovered on my previous slide, which is the span of these first three columns, A1, A2, and A3. They are linearly independent, and therefore the rank is three. That's the first thing I'd like to establish. Now, if I'd like to see what the nullity or the null space of this T map, I have to look at the equation like so, right? Because the null space it's the all possible solutions to the equation like this. And we all know that if we solve something like this, again, I can use the row echelon form. In this row echelon form, I have three leading columns and one non-leading column. That's the one I'm going to parameter, uh, parameterize. The last column is the X4 component, so here's my parameterization. X4 will be my parameter T. Now, if I solve for X3, I will solve it from the third row. And the solution very simple here. It's just simply negative t. I solve for x2 from this line. And here's my solution, 1 quarter. It's because the coefficient here is 4. And then it will be negative 5t and negative 3t. Well, negative 3t because this 3 goes on the other side with plus, but x3 has extra minus here, that's why it's negative 3t. So all together is double T. Here's my solution for X1 from the first line of this matrix. 
one third for this three, then double t for this coefficient on the other side, uh, negative two times, well, this one is obviously zero, and this negative two times the x2 value, which is another negative two. So double t take, well, plus four, it's six, so altogether double t. Here's my complete solution to this. Here's my complete solution to this system of linear equations. If I interpret this system of linear equations as a null space of my linear map t, I see that, so if I mean, first let me just write this as a vector form. In the vector form, my x becomes, my x becomes the vector like this, right? First component double t, negative double t, negative t and t. So my null space, my null space, it's a collection of all solutions from here. It's a null space. It's simply the span of this one single vector. It's simply the span of this one single vector. And therefore, the nullity, which is a dimension of the null space, is 1. Now, I'm very quick today. Now, the interesting thing I'd like to observe here in this example, the example is finished. We just computed everything. Question, I mean, like we computed both the null space and the image space, the dimensions of both. But the thing I'd like to observe is that if you add these two things up, rank and nullity, if you add them up for the linear transformation, it will be 4, which is the dimension of your domain here, V, of this domain, because that's, that's the domain, dimension 4. This is not a coincidence that the sum ended up equal to dimension of the domain. It's actually a very fundamental result about the linear maps. It's called the rank and nullity theorem. Rank and nullity theorem. It says no matter which linear map you take and no matter which setting you're looking at, in, in the setting of any pair of vector spaces, for the linear map, the, it, is always, it, it will always be true, I'm sorry, that the rank and nullity together add up to the dimension of the domain. This is something which is called the rank and nullity theorem.